guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Irene and I'm a registered dietitian and today I thought that it would be fun to do a pediatric nutrition case study. So hopefully this will be helpful and kind of understanding a little bit more about what it is I actually do for my patients and also get a little bit of exposure into the topic if you are interested in doing peds in the future. So of course I have to make a disclaimer that this patient and family in this case study is completely made up and fictional and it's kind of just based off of a mix of scenarios that I have just personally seen and you will likely encounter a lot of in a pediatric hospital. So the scenario is patient A is a four-month-old infant born at 32 weeks, zero days gestation with no significant past medical history. He was advised to come to the hospital by his PCP due to poor weight gain and failure to thrive. Upon admission, his anthropometric measurements were three kilograms in weight, 35 centimeters head circumference, and 50 centimeters length. From the provider's history and physical, you learn that the patient takes Similac Neosure at home, and mom reports no issues with tolerating formula by mouth. So when I'm assessing a patient like this, there are a couple things that I will look at before I go see the patient and talk with the family. So first and foremost, I am going to look at their anthropometrics and kind of their growth chart and what it looks like. In Epic, the growth curve is going to automatically populate and plot for me. So I really don't have to worry about anything except for selecting the correct growth curve. And for this baby, since they're under two years old, we're going to use the WHO growth curve for zero to two year old boys. And you can pull up the growth curve and plot this manually. So you'll see here, you can plot the weight and the length. Since this kiddo is four months old, you're gonna count out his age and months. So that's right here. And then three kilograms is gonna be right at this line here. So you can see he's way below the growth curve. And then you can do that for the length as well. So going up along this line, 50 centimeters is going to be right here. And so for his length, you can tell that his z-score and his percentile is way lower. So obviously you can plot these manually, but what I like to do instead is actually use PD tools. And this is a great tool for plotting like very exact measurements. So here we're gonna select the WHO growth curve and put in the information. So he's four months old. We're just gonna use today as the date of measure. He was three kilos. His head circumference is 35 centimeters and his length is 50 centimeters. And at gestation, he was 32 weeks and zero days. And so this will give me his percentile and z-scores for his chronological age and also for his corrected age. So for his corrected age, he's 2.2 months old. And in case you don't know, corrected age is how old the baby would be if he had been born at term. And term is 40 weeks. So since this baby was born at 32 weeks, that means he was eight weeks early. So we often use corrected age up to one to two years old, depending on like how premature they were. So it kind of levels the playing field for infants that were premature since they didn't have as much time in the womb to grow. So we expect them that that once they get out into the real world, they're smaller than their term counterparts. And then you'll also expect to see a lot of like catch-up growth in these premature infants to kind of get to where they need to be like in chronological age. And so by correcting for their age, if you look at the growth curve for patient A, we go to two months and then he's at three kilos. This makes it a little bit better compared to if he's at four months because he's not as far from where he should be, the difference here is much larger. So his z-score is going to be a little bit better if you are comparing his corrected age to his chronological age. And PD tools, you'll see here, his z-score for his chronological age is negative seven, whereas his z-score for his corrected age is only about negative four. Five. So it's a little bit better. And then with this information, I kind of look at previous data points if I have any to see what their growth has been. For patient A, because he's about two months old, corrected age, I would expect his weight gain to be 23 to 31 grams per day. And that is just based off of like expected growth. So if he wasn't meeting those goals, then we might have to do something about his feedings and adjust them. But if he is meeting those goals, then it may be less concerning depending on what the data points are and where he started. Maybe he was like super, super small, like very low birth weight. And then he's now at three kilos and he's doubled his weight. And maybe it could be okay 
I don't know. It kind of really depends on the situation. For this kiddo, we'll say that we don't really actually have a great history about what his weight used to be. This is all we really know because maybe they came from out of state and we don't have that information. So based off of what we do have, we can look at diagnosing for malnutrition. So for peds, there are a lot of different ways to diagnose malnutrition. For this baby, I see already that his length is less than negative three Z score, so that automatically classifies him for severe malnutrition. If his weight gain was significantly less than 23 grams per day, that could also qualify him as malnutrition. If he was meeting less than 25% of his weight gain goals, that'd be severe malnutrition, less than 50% is moderate, and then less than 75% is mild. Obviously, there are a lot more different ways to classify malnutrition, but I can tell based off of his length Z score that he is severely malnourished. Then another thing that we want to look at whenever we're assessing patients is any intake history. So a lot of times we might have patients that have been seen by dietitians before, so I want to look back at their notes and see what he was taking then, and then follow up with mom to see if she's been doing those recommendations or not. In this case, we'll say that we don't have any information, just like we don't have any information on his previous weight. He has not been seen by a dietitian before, so I don't really know what he's been taking. The provider's notes sometimes do state, oh, mom mixes this much formula and this much water or parents will report mixing to a certain concentration and things like that. But for the purposes of this example, we'll say that we don't really know. And that's some information that we need to gather when we go and talk with mom. And then the last thing that I will typically do before I go see a patient is just kind of estimate like ballpark what their needs are. So how much calorie and fluids they'll probably need. So for infants, for his corrected age, they typically need about 100 to 110 kcals per kg per day and minimum of 100 milliliters per kilogram per day of fluids. The calorie needs are based off of DRI and the fluid needs are based off of Holiday Seeger. Typically, we find that in order to meet calorie needs, infants need to get around 150 to 160 milliliters per kilogram per day just to meet those calorie needs. And so that's usually like my starting point is about 150 milliliters per kilogram per day. How much would that give them? That that's kind of like our goal for his intake. So for this baby, since he is three kilos, he's probably gonna need about 450 milliliters per day of formula to probably meet his needs. And we're going to use some Lac Neosure because that is what mom says that they use at home. And some Lac Neosure is standard concentration 22 kcals per ounce. And that's because it's just a premature formula. So all other infant formulas are standard at 20 kcals an ounce ounce and that's just something that you kind of learn in peds. So if we need three times 150, that gives us 450 milliliters a day and that is 15 ounces. So if he were to take 15 ounces a day and each ounce is 22 kcals, that would give us approximately 330 kcals daily. And if he is three kilos, then that means that that is 110 kcals per kg per day. And that is right around where we estimated how much he needs in terms of calories and fluid. So with this information, if mom is asking me like, how much do you think he actually needs in a day? I'll be able to tell her or if mom is telling me or reporting how much she's feeding him, I can tell if she's like over or under feeding him, if there are any other issues, or perhaps there might be concerns for mom not completely telling the truth about exactly how much kiddo is eating at home and things like that. So now with all of this information, I'm going to go to the patient's room and see him lay eyes on him and then also talk with mom. Once I introduce myself with mom. I ask her what formula she's on. She confirms that it is Simulac Neosure, the yellow can. And then I ask her, okay, mom, how are you mixing the formula at home? And she reports that she's mixing three ounces of water and one scoop. So standard regular infant mixing is two ounces of water to one scoop. There are certain formulas that are a one-to-one -one ratio. Those are typically more European style formulas. But in this case, Simulac Neosure 
standard mixing is two ounces and one scoop. So just from this information, even if I don't know exactly how much calories per ounce mom is mixing to, I know that she's diluting formula and she shouldn't be. Then I might ask mom about some feeding practices. So how often are you feeding your baby? So she tells me she feeds two ounces every three hours. And that seems like a pretty reasonable schedule. So two ounces every three hours is about 16 ounces, which is pretty much where we want him to be. But some parents, again, they may feed every three hours, but only during the day. So you want to ask mom, are you also feeding at night as well? And mom actually says, no, I let the baby sleep overnight because he, he's a good sleeper at night. So he sleeps about eight hours. Then I might ask mom, so how many feeds a day do you think that you actually give him? And she says, maybe about like six feeds a day. And that checks out because if he's sleeping eight hours at night, she can probably only fit in about six feeds a day during the daytime if she's feeding every three hours. Sometimes parents don't exactly know how often they're feeding the baby, especially when you're really sleep deprived. It can be really hard to keep track of. So another way that you could ask the question could be how often do you go through a can of formula? And generally it'll be every two to three days if they're mixing formula correctly. And if they're using just like the standard, I think it's like 12 ounce cans, they should go through one every like two-ish to three days. And that can be another way to assess like if patient is actually getting adequate feeds because a lot of times with failure to thrive babies, parents just don't know that they're supposed to feed them so often or they don't know how much they're supposed to feed them each time or they get the mixing wrong by accident because if you're up late at night at 3 a.m. like you're not reading the back of the can of the formula that closely. So it's really important to ask all these questions because a lot of times it's one of these things that is causing an infant to not gain weight appropriately. Then I'm also going to ask about supplements that they give. So mom says that she gives a multivitamin with iron every day. A very common one is polyvisol and they can just give a milliliter of that a day. For this baby since he's premature, I think that is very appropriate. And then I might also ask mom where they are getting their formula. Are they getting it from WIC or SNAP or are they buying it out of pocket? Because that sometimes can contribute to issues with parents diluting formulas or not feeding their baby as often because they're trying to to make that formula stretch and they don't realize that actually they're not providing their baby with adequate nutrients. So since mom told me her mixing and she's diluting it and she's also not feeding the baby often enough, I am going to go over appropriate mixing with mom. So we're going to mix to standard concentration. We're going to do two ounces of water to one scoop and that'll mix to standard concentration, 22 kcals an ounce. And then I'm also going to go over with mom that at this age, because he's premature also, he really needs to be feeding two ounces about every three hours, even overnight as well. So she really needs to be getting in about eight feeds a day to make sure that he's getting all the calories that he needs to grow. So these are like kind of the things that I would like tell mom and kind of go over with mom. And then obviously I would make sure that mom doesn't have any questions about any of these recommendations. And then I would go back and write my note. So my recommendations would be to continue with some lactose Neo sure 22 kcals an ounce with a goal of two ounces every three hours for eight feeds a day. And then if over his admission, he gains less than 23 grams a day, I would recommend concentrating the formula to 24 kcals per ounce to kind of help with the weight gain because some babies may actually need more calories than we estimate. So he could actually need more than 110 kcals per kg per day in order to grow. That's very patient specific and also disease specific. There's certain conditions that patients naturally need a lot more calories to grow. Something else I'm gonna recommend for this patient is to check the calcium, phosphorus, alkphos, and vitamin D 25 hydroxy levels because this patient was premature and they've been receiving diluted formula. So that means that they were not getting the appropriate calcium and phosphorus needs for their bones to grow appropriately. I just wanna double check because premature infants are at such a high risk of osteopenia that we always wanna stay on top of that. And I also don't want that to be something that hinders their linear growth as well. And then I'm also going to ask for daily weights. Oftentimes Sometimes when infants are admitted for failure to thrive, these are already ordered because they're here purely based off of their poor growth. So we want to make sure that they're growing 
appropriately before discharge. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is say, for example, if this mom says that she is having financial difficulty with obtaining formula, and if she does qualify for WIC, I will tell her that I will provide her with a WIC form to go to her local WIC office and then enroll in WIC and also get formula through there to kind of help her out. And so she's not worrying about not being able to afford the formula and like going through a formula so quickly. I feel like this was a very simple-ish failure to thrive case. Sometimes there are lots of different things going on. There's different social situations. Sometimes it's like a formula issue where they're not tolerating formula. So their growth is really poor. There's lots of different things that could contribute to failure to thrive. But I hope that you enjoyed this example and found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.